Well, thanks again for questions. Some of the things I talked to Jonathan about were the, first of all, we chatted about the sea potatoes for Christmas. So this is a range of new potatoes that you can plant at this time of year in your garden in pots and containers or raised beds, and they will actually produce potatoes for your Christmas dinner. Um, there are new varieties, things like this one called Charolotte, which is a lovely salad potato, but other varieties like uh, Sharps Express are really good, Maris Pier, um, Pendle and Javelin. So they're all av available in garden centres at the moment. They're simple tubers. You plant them up into a patio pot of good quality compost, stick it out in your patio, keep it watered and fed, and they will produce a dinner full of new potatoes for you next Christmas. And I was saying to Jonathan, it's a great project to get the children involved with. So if you get your kids growing potatoes, they can nurture them and look after them right through the summer. Some of the other plants we chatted about were the lavenders, which are just coming into flower now at the moment. This is French lavender. The bees absolutely love this plant. And if you have a problem with sleeping, during the summer with the high temperatures, then slip a bit of lavender under your pillow and you'll sleep like a baby. So lavender is great for beautiful scent. It's got full of essential oils, but it's brilliant for people that suffer from sleeping disorders. Here's a lovely Hebe, which again, if you're looking for something easy, fast to grow, ideal for a pot or container, this is a plant to put in your garden now. It'll flower the whole summer. A lovely one here, which I particularly like, is Coryopsis. So this is a Coryopsis variety. It's a perennial plant that comes year after year. Great for the butterflies and bees. Um, and it's also great for garden birds because in the autumn it produces seed heads that the birds will feed off. So again, it's Coryopsis. It's a very, very easy variety to grow and it comes back year after year. And it's hard to believe that we're even thinking about autumn now, but some of the little capsicums are now available. If you want a little bit of autumnal colour in your garden, something a bit different. These are actually peppers. They are edible, but you can also plant them out into pots and containers just for a bit of colour and something different as well. It gets the conversations going. So now to your questions. Okay, so this first one comes in from Mary. So why has my cabbage outside uh, leaves gone yellow and has brown spots as well? So that's a, a disorder, a fungal disease called black spot or color spot on cabbages. So you often get the yellowing of the leaves, little black kind of um, spots on the foliage, particularly on the outer leaves. So it's a fungal disease. There's, it doesn't really do any damage to the cabbage itself. The cabbage itself is totally edible. So what I would do, Mary, is just take off the outer leaves, just take those off, get rid of them, put them into your refuse bin and get rid of them off-site because they'll have fungal spores on them. Don't put them into your compost heap. And um, the cabbage that's left, the internal solid head, is perfectly fine. So it's a small bit of fungal disease, very similar to black spot and roses or mildew and roses it's spread by wet warm weather which we've been having and um, it, it just really affects the outer edges of the cabbage so take those off get rid of them and then use the head it's perfectly edible if you are planting other plants into that area particularly cabbage plants it would be a good idea to treat the soil with a bit of a, of a fungicide like fungus clear you could apply that to the soil and that'll get rid of any bacterial spores Okay, so can Porik recommend a fast-growing climbing plant, please? Okay, so there's lots of fast-growing climbers. Depending on the height of the wall that you want, you've got climbers like Clematis montana, which flowers in the springtime. It flowers in April, May period. It'll put on six to seven feet of growth in the one year. So it's extremely fast growing, flowers beautifully in springtime and is very easy to grow and is perfect for covering, say, an eight foot to 10 foot high wall. You've also got plants like Solanum, Jasminoides. The name suggests jasmine like flowers and it produces these lovely white flowers. They're not scented, unfortunately, but they're very fast growing, very colorful um, and it flowers from June right through until September, October. So that's um, Solanum jasminoides. And it comes in a variety called Glass Nevin as well, which has got lovely blue flowers, very much similar to the lavender flower. So they're two excellent varieties and um, very, very fast growing as well. Clematis family, anything in the Clematis family are, are vigorous. Honeysuckles are quite fast as well. If you want something evergreen, there's a plant called the Evergreen v Virginia Creeper, Cissus striata. It'll be again available in your local garden centre. It retains its leaf all year round. The leaves go a lovely plum reddish colour in winter and that plant will produce eight to nine feet of growth again in the one year. So there's lots of really vigorous climbers available for planting at this time of year. Now is an excellent time to get them into the soil. Okay, so somebody else wants to know what's the best way to get rid of moss in a driveway? Okay, seems to 
be a regular question here on the show. So, and again, when we get wet weather, which we're having at the moment, you tend to get moss regrowing again on your patios and driveways. So now is a good time to control it. On a dry day, mix a bit of pack PAC with water, apply it over the area, and that'll kill it within six to seven days. So pack can be used on any hard surface area, patio, driveways, walls, slates, tiles, um, and it kills moss within six or seven days. So... Okay, so Patricia wants to know, um, she's having great difficulty with black spots on roses, so do you have any advice? Well, the thing with black spot on, on roses, again, like I mentioned earlier, it is a fungal bacterial disease, so it spreads, again, in high humidity. The, the trick really is to start early. So when you prune the roses in March and April, as soon as they come into growth, you start your treatment of rose clear or rose rescue on the foliage of the plants to keep them clean of black spot and mildew. Having said that, you need to to apply the Rose Clear or Rose Rescue. And it's a good idea to mix, to alternate. So one week, use the Rose Clear. In two weeks' time, use the uh, Rose Rescue. So alternate the sprays. Use them every two weeks from now through to the end of the summer. And just regular treatments with the Rose Clear and the Rose Rescue will keep the black spot under um, control and keep keep stop it from spreading to the young new foliage. The other tip for you is to use a garlic um, so there's a garlic spray called Garlic Wonder. A lot of the growers, the commercial growers of roses, use that to keep black spot off the roses and to get some vigour and health into the roses as well. So you'll get that in your local garden centre called Garlic Wonder. You can safely mix it with the rose clear and apply it onto the foliage of the roses every two to three weeks and that again will help to keep them disease free. So should I use zero lawn liquid again at this time of the year to prevent moss? Another moss question. Okay. So again, moss in the lawn. Again, when we get wet weather, the moss will start to creep back and zero is a very good method of controlling moss. The great thing about zero, it will also help to green up your lawn as well. So it gives it a lovely green colour. Um, so it's not just good for getting rid of moss. It actually gives it uh, a tonic and get, gives it a nice green colour within a couple of days. So now is a good time to put on the zero, mix it one part zero to ten parts water, apply it over the entire lawn area. It'll control any moss that that's thinking of starting now but more importantly it'll help to green up the lawn and give it a fabulous green colour for you. Okay so this comes from Susan so my apple tree is covered in a white fuzz what is it do I need to do something and will it spread? Okay so if the white fuzz is on the leaf of the plant that's mildew and um, powdery mildew there's a lot of it about at the moment again it's it's a, a disease of like a bit like black spot on roses I'm seeing a lot of mildew not just on apple trees but on many trees again you can use a fungus uh, spray called Fungus Clear which again is safe to use on apple trees um, and that'll help to arrest mildew. If the greyness is down on the stem, if it's kind of a little clump of grey uh, material that could be aphid, woolly aphid on the stem but my, my guess is that it's uh, powdery mildew on the foliage of the plant and the Fungus Clear will control that. You can nearly spray for that every year because mildew is very common during the summer months so Ideally, you should start in May, early June, applying the, the uh, fungus clear onto the foliage of the apple tree just to keep it 100% clean. Okay, so this comes in from Mary. So she said that she bought two, I'm just not sure if I pronounce these correctly, so two gallery lupinous yeah, plants, yeah, yes. Yeah, um, yeah. They were big established plants, but within a week they started wilting. She since cut the drooping leaves off, but they have finished flowering and they're being eating again with little green caterpillars. Okay. Um, should she give up? No. <laughs> well, don't give up on them because gallery lupins are very, very easy to grow and they come back year after year. Now, they do attract caterpillars, which obviously are on them at the moment, and sometimes you can get aphids on the lupins as well. So the, you've done everything right. The main thing is to remove any flowers that have faded now, tidy up the leaves as you have, give them a couple of liquid feeds and that will stimulate them back into new growth again. And to control the caterpillars, I would use some Bug Clear, which is very safe to use. So you'll get that in your local garden centre. Bug Clear, you mix it with water, you apply it onto the foliage of the lupins and that will control any aphids and caterpillars and it'll give the chance uh, the lupins a chance then to start coming back again so regular feeding regular watering you'll build them up for next year they're all they're not you might get a nod flower this year from them but they're going to flower next may and june brilliantly for you so they're well worth persevering with so application of bug clear and continue to feed them with something like the osmo universal feed that'll bring them back into good health again 
Okay, and the last question is, do you have any suggestions for office plants? Okay. Well, that's a great question because office plants, all plants, give off oxygen. So if you want to add some extra oxygen and purify the air in your office, then putting in some office plants is, is a really good starting point. Now, there's a whole different range of indoor plants that can be used. And depending on the aspect, if it's a bright, sunny location, you want to use something that's going to tolerate bright light. Things like the jade plant or money tree is a brilliant and very, very easy plant to grow. You water it once a month and you repot it every five years. So it's a really simple indoor plant to grow. There's a whole range of succulents and cacti plants that are suitable for, again, bright locations, maybe bright windowsills. And again, all of those are very, very easy to care for. If it's a more shaded spot, then something like ferns, the indoor ferns do really well. And again, they love being inside. Again, watering about every two to three weeks and repotting every second year for ferns. Peace lilies do very well inside. Mother-in-law's tongue, the Sansevieri, is a, another great indoor plant. The castor oil plant is also an excellent indoor plant. So there's a wide range of indoor plants available now. My advice really is to pick plants to suit the location. So if it's shade, you need plants that will tolerate shade. And if it's a bright, open area, maybe at a windowsill where there's bright light coming in, consider the money tree, the jade plant, the mother-in-law's tongue, some of the cacti variety and some of the succulent plants would do really well for you. And this is a brilliant time to introduce indoor plants into your office or home. Bye for now. I'm back in two weeks' time. Bye for now.